Hi, I'm Mandy Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer, and this is the first video in our series entitled Industry Evolutions. And I'm joined in this video series by Eric Johnson, uh, and I'll ask him to introduce himself in a minute, but I will tell you that I am so grateful he's here with us for this series because he is the chairperson of the Washington Realtors Presidential Advisory Group. We refer to them as PAGS, and I will certainly use that term as we go forward in this video series. But Eric is the chairperson of the Presidential Advisory Group created by our president, Sherry Daniels, to look at industry evolution with respect to issues that are receiving a lot of pressure currently at the national level. In this video series, we're gonna talk about those pressures, so I won't spend any more time talking about them right this minute. Instead, I'm gonna ask Eric mm -hmm. to introduce yourself, please. Absolutely, uh, so my name's Eric Johnson. I have been licensed since 1995. I've been a managing broker owner since 2003 and I'm currently serving as the Director of Training for Northwest Real Estate Brokers, which comprises of Century 21, Coldwell Banker and Sotheby's offices in Eastern Washington, Idaho, and Western Montana. Thank you, broker, educator, manager. Mm -hmm. uh, with a long history in all of those arenas, which is why he was an excellent choice to chair this inc in really, truly, incredibly important Thank you. Uh, PAG. The reason that President Daniels created this PAG is because there is an evolutionary tide within our industry. It's un undeniable and unavoidable. And the question is, will Washington Realtors react to changes that are made by other people or will Washington Realtors uh, be on the leading edge that creates the processes that result in the goals <coughs> that the, the evolutionary tide is attempting to achieve. And really, I think that if I were to summarize the goal of the evolutionary tide, it is to create greater transparency for buyers in the real estate brokerage compensation system. How are real estate brokers compensated? What role do buyers play in broker compensation? And how do we create a greater understanding for buyers generally of that of those issues? Would you would you agree with that? I would agree with that. And uh, I would also add that's also couched in agency, our presentation of agency, our explanation of agency, what our duties are for, to our clients versus our customers. And uh, I think there's a lot of clarification and improvement that Washington can do uh, to, their, to their license law to, to help consumers understand the role of their real estate agent. Absolutely, I, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Compensation and what, what are buyers getting in exchange sure. for that compensation, right? What are the services, the, the benefits, and we refer to them under law as the duties mm -hmm. that, that brokers bring to that agency relationship for which they're receiving compensation. They're, they're tied hand in hand, and the PAG that President Daniels put together is looking at all of those issues and where Washington State, led by the Washington Realtors, of course, with respect to the real estate industry, fits into that evolutionary tide. Would, mm -hmm. Fair? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so when we talk about the evolutionary tide, what am I referring to? At the national level, there are lawsuits, class action lawsuits. There are regulatory investigations that are all happening. And Washington State, Washington Realtors, um, is poised to see what's happening across the country, learn from it, and uh, change or move for a change in policy, even law, as as the realtor industry believes is um, most productive to achieve those consumer protection goals that are ultimately the, the, the result of the movement that's happening. So what are the lawsuits? What are the regulatory probes we're talking about? At the national level, there are 
pr predominantly four lawsuits that have been filed, all in the form of class action. I won't, we don't need to talk about each four individually. Instead, let's, let's talk about generally what's the nature of the lawsuit. There's, there's a lawsuit that's filed, there's lawsuits that are filed by sellers as a class. And so a whole bunch of sellers get together uh, through the leadership of the legal counsel who's representing the class, the plaintiff class, and they sue the defendants. And the defendants in these lawsuits include the National Association of Realtors, multiple franchises, multiple MLSs, depending on the particular lawsuit at issue. And the, the thrust of the lawsuit filed by the sellers as a class is to say that because of an NAR policy that obligates all uh, sellers to offer compensation through an NAR MLS to the buyer broker, the result of that is that sellers are required to compensate the broker who's advocating against the interests of the seller. And, and the seller class says that's not fair. Why should sellers have to pay buyer brokers when buyer brokers are advocating against the interest of the seller? And moreover, the plaintiff class says, because of the power held by NAR MLSs, there is an antitrust component that not only requires some level of compensation, not just a dollar, but, but a higher level of compensation if the seller is actually going to be able to sell their property. That's the claim asserted in a nutshell by the plaintiffs in the plaintiff class action lawsuits. NAR has great defenses uh, sure. al along the lines of, that's how the real estate industry works. Buyers can't get financing to pay, to comp pay compensation, to, pay compensation to brokers, for example. Right. Uh, Buyers need representation. Absolutely. Sellers, in fact, are incentivized for buyers to be represented because without buyer representation, sellers have a lesser chance of getting to a closing, closing. table. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so there are good reasons to for for NA, for the, for the defendants in the in the seller class action to defend that lawsuit and even to defend it successfully. Mm -hmm. But, but right now, all we know for sure about that lawsuit is that there will probably be a trial. The, the court did not grant pre-trial motions to dismiss. So we are likely headed to a trial on those issues, but we have no idea what, what, the, outcome. Yeah, what sure. the outcome will be. Right. And then there's a separate class action lawsuit filed by buyers. buyers. And, the, and the buyer side lawsuit is claiming that buyers have uh, for decades been unwittingly overpaying for homes because that buyer broker compensation is built into the price therefore the buyer is actually paying for that service uh, but it's it's um, it's blended into their financing and therefore they are paying inflated prices uh, that they wouldn't normally have to pay if they didn't have to deal with this buyer <clears throat> broker compensation uh, which again, there's, to your points, like where they represented, they're able to finance that, that represent, the cost of that representation. Right. Uh, did everybody end up happy at the end of the deal? Did they sign off on the paperwork? Was it disclosed? And, and, that's, and that's really where, back to our peg and those things, uh, they're, depending on the state, there can be confusion there, right? Uh, where the buyer doesn't necessarily know like how is my buyer broker getting paid and and that's part of the reason or one of the reasons we're we're having this discussion exactly uh, and at the buyer lawsuit was initially dismissed the class action lawsuit was initially dismissed not because the court said you buyers are way out in left field you don't have a good claim to assert but rather more of a technical issue that the court said uh, the way the the the, the, law, the claims are made, they can't go forward in a courtroom. <laughs> but the judge dismissed the claims in a way that the buyers could come, the buyer class could come back and, and assert new claims. And significantly, this is where the, this discussion dovetails into the 
regulatory review that we've seen, again, at a national level by the DOJ, the Department of Justice, and maybe even the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, um, looking at the real estate industry. The, the, I think that it makes sense to talk about those regulatory probes in a second video. Mm -hmm. We've introduced the subject with this video. Um, again, it's important to understand that the national lawsuits, when I say they're national, they, they are regional, uh, but they're going to impact nationwide. One of the lawsuits is filed in Missouri, one of them is filed in Illinois. Um, at this point, none of the defendants are, in fact, Washington State defendants. It is important to understand before we jump to the next video that because the vast majority of brokers licensed in Washington State are members of the Northwest MLS. I know not every broker is a member of the Northwest MLS. That's great. The point I want to make, though, before we jump to the next video, is that because Northwest MLS is an independently owned, a member owned MLS, it's not an NAR MLS, Northwest MLS is uniquely poised to make changes to its rules and the forms that it generates for all brokers in Washington to use on a statewide level in a way that other states can't be responsive. So Washington state is poised to lead the nation on these issues because Washington Realtors and Northwest MLS has the flexibility to make rules that are most protective mm -hmm. of the consumer uh, of the consumer while still achieving the goals of the industry. So this video series is going to discuss how Washington Realtors will, in my opinion, lead the nation to uh, evolve the industry in a way that preserves the goals of the industry while offering greater protections to consumers and certainly greater transparency to buyers about the services offered by brokers and the compensation received by brokers. Absolutely. Anything else? I don't think so. I think I'm ready for the next video. Okay. <laughs> If you have questions on this or anything else, please visit our website, warealtor.org, and ask a question through the link to the legal hotline. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.